crypto peeps today i'm going to be discussing a topic that many of you had requested and continue to request both in the discord and on my youtube channel as well as the emails and direct messages that i get um, this is by far the the most common question asked which is can you please go over the stop loss or stop limit stop limit process in binance or whatever exchange you happen to be using if it does support a stop limit and so today I will oblige and go through that for you because it is one of the most important tools that that a successful trader will use uh, throughout his or her trading career and I honestly cannot live without it uh, that is not hyperbole that is actual fact without the stop loss I would probably be broke in terms of my investment portfolio um, why is that well the stop loss initially let, let's take it from there, there are two scenarios obviously right you have buy and sell let's take the most common one that a stop loss is associated with or a stop limit i should say stop limit a stop loss is is slightly different we'll go over what the variation is in a second but the stop limit essentially from a sell perspective um, allows you to stop the bleeding if and when the market or the security that you're trading happens to be in a decline and you do not want to lose more than a certain percentage on that security i implement this in almost every single coin or stock that i trade and especially uh, as the volatility goes up so the more volatile the coin or the stock the more stringent i am or strict i am in placing my my stop limits now on a secure sometimes you don't place a stop limit like for instance when when bitcoin is um you know at, at a at a stable moment in time and it's not fluctuating like crazy you might not want to put a put a, a stop limit because you don't want it to trigger prematurely all right let us go through the scenarios in more detail as i said we will focus on the sell because that is the one that the stop limit is mostly associated with although there are very compelling cases to learn how to use a stop limit when it comes to buying which is something that most investors at least the ones that that i come into contact with and definitely the ones that don't have a lot of experience they don't associate stop limits with buy orders they only associate them with sell orders let's take a look at a real-time example so I'm on my computer screen here and I have the chart of VeChain pulled up. Uh, this is on Coinigy. If you're interested in using Coinigy, I'll leave a link in the description. So let's say that based on the chart, you put in a buy order for VeChain. We won't go through any technical analysis right now because that is for a different video. So <clears throat> you put in a buy order for VeChain at current prices. So right now it is at 59,189 Satoshis as you see here on the right. And you want to protect yourself and your investment from mass losses here is what i would do so again we're not going to go through any detailed technical analysis but this tool right here this price range tool and you'll see it in trading view as well as in, in coinage it's the same <clears throat> you basically want to use this to quickly calculate your percentage loss if and when this uh security if v chain starts declining right so you would click on the current price which was that dotted green line and you go down and you see automatically that this thing starts to calculate your percentage your percentage loss um, in a hypothetical scenario and you you say to yourself and this obviously this all depends on your risk profile how much money you have put into the coin or the stock or the security um, this depends on, on a lot of factors but for simplicity's sake let's stick to 20 percent so you say to yourself i do not want to sustain more than a 20 percent loss so you go ahead and use this price tool here this price range tool to measure what a 20 percent loss would look like and you figure or you come to the conclusion that 20 percent loss is 47,093 satoshis from the current level so you go over to Binance or whatever exchange you happen to use that supports a stop limit function some of them don't I don't think KuCoin does but uh, Binance does so let's just stick to Binance again for simplicity's sake so you're in Binance you already purchased the security at the current prices and you want to set a stop loss what did we say our stop loss was at 47,000 or limit price sorry our limit uh, loss was at 47,093 Satoshis so that is your last your limit right that's that's the most that you're willing to lose so here is where the stop limit come in would come in you would place your your limit price at the absolute last price that you are willing to sell this thing for at a loss so it was 47,093 if I remember correctly yes 47,093 now what is this stop right here well 
Here's what the stop is. If you if you just set a limit order, right? So you'll see that there are there are multiple tabs here. If you just set a limit order for 47,093 satoshis and and clicked sell, what this would do is sell automatically, right? Because the price is above your limit price. So the limit order basically tells Binance sell this amount of V chain at 47,093 satoshis or better. That is the operative, those are the operative words here, or better. So think of that every time you think of a straight limit order, not a stop limit, but a straight limit, it is basically selling at the price that you indicate here or better. So currently we take a look at what the price of VeChain is on Binance, 58,000 and change Satoshis. Is it more than this? Yes. So it will go ahead and execute because you're telling Binance, execute my order at, to sell at 47,093 or better. You don't want that, right? What you want is for Binance to sell or initiate a sell once it hits this level, right? So say that VeChain starts declining, you want to limit your losses with this price range. You don't want to sell it right now. So you go to stop limit, your limit stays the same, right? What you would put in as your limit stays the same, 47,093. Your stop would be a price above that. Now, why do you want to do this? Again, we already stated the reason why you wanted to do this. The main reason is because at a limit, your order would execute automatically for this price since this price is better than the one you have set as your limit. So that is reason number one. Reason number two is as the uh, security or the coin is declining, right? Imagine it's declining at such a fast rate that it passes 47,093. It's, ju it's just rocketing down, right? Say the market is crashing. It passes 47,093. It does not give Binance a chance, right? These are all the sell and buy orders, so yours would be in the queue here. It does not give Binance a chance to execute your order uh, in a timely fashion. So the market might decline well past your limit order or your limit price and Binance would not execute your order because again, what is this price? What is this limit price? It means Binance, please sell VeChain at 47,093 Satoshis or better. If the market declines past it before Binance gets to execute that order, then it will not execute an order. You are stuck with the amount of VeChain that you have in your portfolio and you are effed. So stop price will be slightly higher than the limit price, right? So we would set this at, uh, arbitrarily this can be whatever. So you can set it at 48,000, you can set it at 49,000. And all that does is tells Binance, hey, when the market hits this, when the market hits 48,000 Satoshis, right? Execute this limit order at 47,093 or better. And again, I'm, I'm putting the Satoshis in here, but in reality you would put, you know, 0 0.000, you put the actual Bitcoin, um, the actual Bitcoin number in here. I'm just, for, simplic for simplicity's sake, I'm using Satoshis. And again, for those that don't know, Satoshis is basically the Bitcoin price uh, with eight decimal points uh, in advance, right? So instead of stating this as 0 0.00058567, you'd move this decimal point um, eight spaces in advance and you'd get 58,500 whatever. <clears throat> okay, I digress. So that is where you want to set your stop. Your stop goes above your limit price in a sell situation, right? Now, you don't want to set this too high because what did we say? So say you set this at, you know, 55,000. You're like, why don't you just set it for, you know, a number way higher? Well, again, because the minute that the market hits 55,000, your limit order is going to get executed for 47,093 or better or better, right? So that is why you don't want to make this too high. So you would make it either 48,000, you can even make it, you know, 47,100, which is slightly higher than 47,093, right? And so that is where you would use a stop limit in this scenario. And if you're wondering, because we went over the stop limit and the limit, the market is essentially just the market price. So you would say, 
you know, sell X amount of VeChain at whatever the market price is. Again, you have your orders here, right? The, this is the, the market orders of everybody involved in the market. So these are all the sells, these are all the buys. So yours would get slotted into this queue somewhere and it would just sell at whatever this market price is. As you see, this market price continues to fluctuate. And so this would just sell at whatever the market price is. Um, but today we're talking about stop limits. I just wanted to not leave the, the market tab out in case you were wondering what that was. So that is the, the stop limit on a sell. That's how you would stop the bleeding. And this also works in, in GDAX. So here is GDAX. Um, you have the market, which we just went over. You have the limit, which we also went over, meaning please sell at this price or better. And then you have the stop limit, which you would have to, in, in, um, in GDAX, you have to pull this, this, uh, this tab down right here, right? This, this drop down. You'd have to pull it down in order to get the limit price. So again, your limit price would go here. Your stop price is higher, slightly higher than your limit price. And that is how to execute. Oh, I should probably be on the sell tab. There you go. And so that is how to execute a stop limit sell. Any questions, hit me up on Discord, hit me up on, leave a comment in, in the YouTube and we will get you squared away. All right, so that was the stop limit sell order. And if you guys are, are wondering what's the difference between stop limit and stop loss, in colloquial terms, we use those, those interchangeably, right, when it comes to crypto. In reality, there is a difference, especially when you're talking about stocks or options. A stop loss is just like a stop limit, instead of, but instead of initiating a limit sell order when the stop price is hit, it will initiate a market order. And we talked about what market orders were. So you would set your stop price in the same way that you would set it in the stop limit, but instead of initiating a limit order, it would just execute the order at whatever the market price is. That concept does not exist in Binance or any other crypto exchange that I can think of, and I don't know if it's coming. Okay, so when do we wanna use a stop limit buy? That's a great question. So again, a lot of investors don't even think to use a stop limit on a buy. The same reasons that make this stop limit sell useful are true for its mirror image, which is the stop limit buy. So let's go through an example of why you would want to set a stop limit buy and how you would do that. Okay, so if you follow the trade alerts, I had sent out a trade alert for Litecoin earlier. The details would be in the Discord, but you also have to be subscribed to the Patreon to get the trade alerts. So let's say that, again, we're gonna leave uh, detailed technical analysis out of here. So we'll just draw some rough draft trend lines. So say that you're waiting for Litecoin to break out of this triangle right here, right? This bull flag that, that's forming right here. And you're wanting to confirm in what direction the market is heading. So you, you, know, you say to yourself that if it breaks this resistance line, then I feel like Litecoin will start a bull, bullish rally, right? Because there was this, this bull flag, if it breaks this resistance line, then it will continue on an upward trajectory most likely. And you are wanting to wait for that confirmation before buying into it. Obviously, you can buy now and see what happens and set your, your stop limit if it continues to decline further than, than you're willing to lose. Or you can wait and set up, you can possibly set up a, an alert here in, in Coinigy or TradingView and say if Litecoin passes this resistance line, so let's just say right now it's what, a 224, so let's call this, let's just say 226 or 225. So if Litecoin gets to $226, then it breaks this resistance line and I want to catch it on the way up. But I'm not willing to make an investment now because I want to wait for confirmation. So you can use a stop limit buy in order to execute this. Let's go over to GDAX. So click on buy, because right, it was on sell from the, the previous exa example. And you would say, I want to buy, uh, let's just say 20 Litecoin. I wanna buy 20 Litecoin, again, the price that we said, if it broke resistance and confirmed our uh, bullish trajectory, it would be 226. So you're telling GDAX, if and when the price hits 226, then I want to buy Litecoin for 226.50. And you know, based on what we learned about the stop limit sell, the same is true here. So once Litecoin on GDAX, hits $226, a limit order will go in for $226.50. Now, this same, the same exact scenario holds true as it does with the stop limit sell. What does this mean? It's telling GDAX, give me a price of $226.50 or better. So in this case, GDAX would try and get you this price or lower. If it goes higher than this, 
GDAX will not initiate the order for you. So if you if you really wanted to catch Litecoin, you could set this just to be more prudent at say 227. That way you are almost sure to catch it because again, you have all these buy orders and all these sell orders and you will fall somewhere in this queue depending on the price that, that you set. And that's really it. So it's not as complicated as it seems. We went through the stop limit sell order, which is the one that most people associate with stop limits. But there's also a case to be made for stop limit buys. And I use it all the time, right? In order to wait for market confirmation before jumping into a security or a coin or a stock that might be upon a bullish rally, that might be coming upon a bullish rally, but you just need market confirmation based on your trends and your analysis. You need it to hit a certain price point before you say, okay, I'm ready to invest in this. That's what a stop limit buy is used for. So if you're looking at a chart and you're like, oh man, it looks like it's bullish, but I really don't know. It's okay if you lose out on two, two or three dollars, right? Like if Litecoin right now is 225 and you know you set your stop limit buy for 227, it's two dollars. But that two dollars can save you a lot of money in the long run because you are waiting for market confirmation before going into, before making an investment or a purchase decision. Now, before we wrap up, the other most common question I get is how do I set stop limits for protecting my investment, right? In case the coin starts declining below a level that I'm willing to accept, but at the same time, set a stop limit buy so that if the coin reaches a profit level that I'm happy with, I can sell. So essentially what you're trying to do is set a range. So you're saying to yourself, if the coin or the token goes to a certain profit target, I wanna take profits. If it falls below a certain loss target, then I just wanna sell and cut my losses. Unfortunately, that is not available right now on Binance. I don't think there's a crypto exchange where that is available. And that trading technique actually has a name. And we used to use it a lot in the stock world. And it's actually called one cancels the other order. And you'll see here, one cancels the other order or OCO. And I'll leave a link to this Investopedia uh, article that describes what the OCO is. I wish that Binance brings it. Maybe if we pester them a lot on, on Twitter or something, then, then they'll, um, finally have it available. I know that that's how they got the, the stop limit order finally up is because people kept asking them for it and they finally uh, capitulated and answered the customer's demands. Maybe if we ask them to implement a one cancels the other order or, or an OCO mechanism that they will actually do that because that is very valuable. Currently you cannot do that, right? So essentially what you have to do is settle for manual type of techniques in order to, to achieve this. And what I do is I'll either set a stop limit sell right? And I will set up a, an alert in Coinigy um, that tells me, hey, it's at your profit target. And that way I'll get a text or an email. Obviously, it's not the most optimal solution because you could miss out, you know, market timing sometimes is, is everything, especially in a volatile market. So you could miss out on potential profits, but that is the landscape that we're in. That is why we keep saying that crypto is in its infancy in every facet, whether we're talking about trading or technology or the fundraising um, mechanisms like the ICOs versus IPOs, whatnot. So it is what it is. That is what we have to live with right now. And that is perfectly fine. I'm sure that some exchanges, especially the big ones like Binance, will start looking into this if we keep asking for it and requesting them to actually implement this technology. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. It is by far the number one most requested comment and question that I get in the Discord and on the YouTube. Join the Discord, it's 100% free. For the trade alerts and the post YouTube live stream discussions, join the Patreon. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment in the description. Let me know if this helped you. Let me know if you have any other questions. Leave your crypto addresses in the comments. Most importantly, subscribe here and hit the bell for more crypto talk, trading strategy, and crypto news. I am not your financial advisor. Stay safe out there in the markets. Peace.